Hello everyone! Thank you so much for being here. I've got new background stuff there. Yay! I've got my winter um, garland and then there's like this really cute uh, blush pink pom-pom garland and at a distance it's probably hard to see but in between all the big pom-poms there's like a smaller sequin pom-pom. It's really cute. It's doing exactly what I wanted it to do back there. It's looking a little festive but it's not being super loud so I love that. Yay! Um, so this video is going to be a Q&A. Uh, I asked on Instagram for some questions. I just feel like it's been forever since we've done something like this and every time I do one I feel like um, myself and you all just all kind of reconnect a little bit through um, the discussion of various things. So if you want to answer any of these questions in the comments section, if any resonate with you, you can feel free to do so. But I've just got my phone out over here and I'm going to apply my makeup. I will definitely list everything that I put on in my description as always. But the first one I have here is just how are you doing? And um, I would say I'm doing really well. I'm really feeling at peace, I would say, um, after what was a really difficult year last year health-wise uh, with my mom and dad, mostly dad, and I saw a question about their health, so I guess I'll just uh, take that here also off the top. They're doing so much better, but I mean, 2021, you want to talk about the hits my dad took. I feel like he's the kind of person, this is my um, Hard Candy Sheer Envy Hydrating Primer with the 12 hour makeup grip. I love this one. My parents, I feel, have gone through a lot of their life without any kind of hospital medical stuff, just very blessed. But you know what I've learned? Sometimes the blessings are in the things that God gives you time to take care of, you know, like the the things that you get the alert on. And for a while, kind of culminating at the start of 2021, my dad had felt, you know, less energy, just a lot of weakness, even going upstairs, going up a few stairs, doing any kind of physical stuff would be a real uh, taxing thing. And he's a person who's in really good shape. He was a college athlete. You know, it just, it, it didn't make sense that this could all just be chalked up to aging. Several different different things were explored. Ultimately, he ended up being directed to a hematologist, and that's a doctor of the blood, my friends. They really will dig in, and they'll find out what's going on. You know, he did have a really low red blood cell count and came to find out he had lymphoma. Um, it was a slow-growing, I believe they called it follicular-level lymphoma, and the doctor said it was very treatable. And actually, in over that summer, summer of 2021, he basically got through that in two sessions of chemotherapy. And um, that was a tough time too. This whole time, like me and my family, you know, we're going through so much worry and fear and wonderment and chemotherapy, you know, is hard. I remember like trying to help make food and things that might interest him. And he's normally a person who could eat like a horse and just, you know, take down everything. And chemo doesn't make you feel real good in your stomach. So it was just kind of like, uh, let's just get through this. And then by August, he had a heart attack and ended up needing a triple bypass. And it came at the time when hospitals were full of people with COVID and that surgery couldn't even happen at our local hospital and one of the scariest parts of my life to date would probably be the time spent wondering if a nearby hospital could get him in. And I need to get going on the makeup here or I'll never get done. Um, Sephora Best Skin Ever. I'm using this and I'm using the concealer that is new to me that's also from that line. I like this foundation, medium buildable coverage they call it. It's really pretty and I've liked the concealer too. So this is 15.5 in and this is 11.5 P. Ends up getting that surgery done by phenomenal surgeon in St. Louis, which St. Louis is a good city to go to if you need uh, heart surgery, come to find out, and get that taken care of. And there's, you know, kind of a long road to recovery after that. But we're talking by fall, October, like I think things were definitely on the up and up. And then by the end of October, my mom has her hernia surgery, um, emergency hernia surgery. Came out thinking she had some kind of stomach flu, couldn't keep food down didn't know why, she had fainted. And this all transpired over like the course of a week, okay? So it wasn't like, oh, she was struggling with it. Like one day she just felt a little unusual pain, wasn't quite sure where to pinpoint it. The body just, you know, there was an obstruction there. There was an area that needed to be repaired and she was able to get that taken care of, fortunately. But I mean, just all these things were like a wild ride, you know? It was just so crazy how they stacked up. It was like the moment we could come up for air on dad, mom had that. And then um, things kind of calmed down, start of 2022 comes. Probably the number one scariest thing that I 
encountered was a morning when dad seemed to like, he didn't seem to have his memory, I think this was February, like confusion, like is this a stroke? What just happened here? You know, like he, he's sitting there saying, I'm okay, I'm okay, but wasn't recalling like things we just talked about. And I'm thinking, what in the world? I rush him to the emergency room and they do every kind of scan, you know, that would tell you whether or not that was a stroke. It was not a stroke. Um, no brain damage whatsoever. Um, what the guy ended up saying is he has a very slow heart rate. It's dropping into the 30s, you know, and dad is a person, he's had a slower heart rate his whole life, and through a lot of your life, people will see that as a positive and call it like an athlete's heart rate or whatever, but um, it was dropping low. Like, we were in the ER, and every time it went to like 35 or something, I want to say, um, you know, a bell would start dinging and he's laying there like barely staying awake and his heart rate's going low. And the, I remember the ER doctor saying, you're probably looking at a pacemaker situation here. And I think that was mentioned actually um, after he had his heart surgery, but they decided not to do it then. And now this was kind of like proof of, yeah, that's necessary. Because having a low or slow heart rate can cause all kinds of symptoms. If you look it up on American Heart Association, you're gonna see all kinds of things. And long story short, this is, I mean, this was just the scariest time ever. He gets his pacemaker and everything is kind of restored, I guess you'd say. Like, I have same old dad back, just like he always was, you know? Um, and now having a pacemaker, when a person gets one, there's a period of adjustment to it. Like your heart is beating at a, at a new pace that it maybe hasn't done in a long time. And I just, I think there is some adjustment, but that day when he was feeling like just woozy and confused, it was all going back to that incredibly slow heart rate that he was dipping into. And when he, oh, but prior to getting the pacemaker, they sent him home with a heart monitor. They knew within like a day that Okay, I mean, he was supposed to wear the thing for, I think, two weeks. They knew within a day he needed that. His cardiologist called on a Sunday afternoon to say, you need to come to the hospital. We're getting this in tomorrow. I mean, it was pretty definitive. I, I really believe it helped so much now. And I mean, just everything about my dad is like same old dad, you know. So if you ask me how I'm doing right now, um, I feel like multiple weights have been lifted. Since that time, he's had PET scans, which really detailed look at your body, reveal no cancer. He's had great appointments with his cardiologist that have followed, you know, the heart surgery he's had, which had been so successful. And my dad is the, probably one of the people with just the one of the best attitudes you're ever gonna stumble upon. Just a good, honest, hardworking, great attitude person. And I think, I remember before he got the pacemaker, mom said that he said, why is all this happening to me? And I said, I've been praying for his good health and maybe a lot of big things had to happen for that prayer to be answered, you know? And maybe all of these things that are happening, you know, the heart attack that didn't take him down, the lymphoma that was caught before it got too bad, these aren't success stories everybody gets to come away with. And I don't underestimate that at all, but um, you know, it, I totally understand why he would feel like, uh, this is a lot and why is this all happening to me? And just knowing what I know now and looking back at all the chain of events, I see it as a situation where, you know, we wanted the best for him. We weren't going to sit back and just say, that's just aging. That's just this. We weren't willing to just accept some things and push, push harder, dig deeper, see great doctors and figure it out. And since that time, he's had some skin cancer spots removed on his face and ear. I mean, wear your sunscreen, folks, but that felt like lower level stuff compared to some of the other things we were worried about, you know, with the heart and the lymphoma and everything. But dad is doing great and I'm so grateful for him. I'm so grateful for my mom. And I know this is a long story. I got my concealer on there. Isn't that a nice concealer, nice foundation. The look is, you know, you can see my freckles through it, but it still really evens me out, does it not? And we don't know what kind of hand we're going to be dealt, you know, day to day, but how am I doing? I'm doing quite well. I am doing very, very well. Health is so important, and I feel so, so grateful that so many things have been sorted out successfully, um, because not everyone has that story to tell, and I'm going to be very grateful and thankful for all of that.
Um, what purse do you carry and is it full of lippies? We needed a shift here, yes. Um, so I carry like a little crossbody, uh, almost like, I guess you could wear it like a fanny pack, but I kind of wear it crossbody just because it feels better that way. Um, I got it from Amazon. I absolutely love it. It has like three little zips, but it's overall not much bigger than my cell phone. And I just keep one lip balm in there. And it's like one of my little flat Kosas ones. I have never been a person who wants to keep a ton of makeup in my bag. I like to keep my makeup in my makeup room and take just one lip color with me and usually like I keep a compact in there like I think I have I have a compact in my bigger bag not in the little guy but just take kind of a universal lip that can work for anything or if it's a real special occasion and it's like I am wearing this lip color I'll make sure I take it I would make sure I had that a powder and a lash glue if I was wearing lashes those are in my bigger bag I have a tote bag it's a Louis Vuitton Neverfull which I gotta say I've had that for years it doesn't look like it's hardly aged at all. It's the brown kind of like checkerboard looking one. Um, and I'll take that like when the girls go to dance, they, I can throw their shoes in there. I can throw books. I'm kind of in a place with my kids where I don't constantly have to take around a ton of stuff for them. So that's nice. But if I need a bigger bag anymore, that's what I'm taking. And yeah, compact, lip color, lash glue. Those are the essentials. Do you miss working in the news? Um, I saw this question a lot. Um, there are times where I do miss uh, some of the things that I did. I really enjoyed interviewing people. I really liked telling stories, the writing. The people I worked with, my specific team on the morning show was so wonderful. Um, so yes, I miss elements of what I did, but in order to do that, I, you give up a lot in terms of the schedule. I have to ask myself, you know, would I want to not be around when my kids get up or would I want to be in bed when they're still having their evening time? No guarantee that you're not working holidays. There's a lot of baggage. There's a lot that comes with that job and there are some high points that I love, but I really, really love the flexibility of what I get to do here and now. Very thankful for that. I set this with my wet and wild powder, by the way. <laughs> This feels so crazy. I can't handle this. Doing questions and doing makeup is hard. I'm gonna use this and then I can be on the same product for a while and kind of fly through this. My Hourglass Unlocked Elephant. Fave coffee brand creamer syrup. Okay, um, I, I make my coffee at home every day in my Keurig. So I'm using the Keurig K-Cups. Uh, one of my favorite types that I think I've ever had is the Starbucks Fall Blend. That tastes so good to me. Um, and I think the Starbucks K-Cups in general are some of the best. I'll even do just plain old Folgers, you know, that's fine. Like, I'm not a real coffee snob, but wow, there is something extra good about the Starbucks Fall Blend. And I'll usually use a creamer, like any kind of special seasonal creamer. Like right now I found the Grinch uh, Peppermint Mocha International Delight. And I ran out of my Fall Blend, but I got the Pike Place Roast, I think it's called. So I use that, I use one packet of stevia, and a small splash of creamer to where I feel like I can taste it, but it doesn't like make my coffee look like it's cream either. <laughs> like I, I don't want it to look light brown, I want it to look just a little bit lighter than black. That's where I'm at with coffee. I'm the type of person that goes to, pulls up to a Starbucks and gets confused, like needs to research it first because I don't know what to ask for and I forget how they size it. Like I, that's how infrequently I get Starbucks. <laughs> I did recently get a cappuccino, a uh, sugar-free vanilla cappuccino from McDonald's and it was so, so good. I was doing Christmas decorating on Sunday. I needed an energy boost and I got a cappuccino and it was lovely. Favorite beauty retailer, Ulta, Sephora, QVC, etc. and why? Um, Walmart. Walmart sells it the cheapest. Walmart's cheaper than Ulta. Ulta has better selection though, don't they? Like they have more brands, I get that. Um, but if we're talking like just going in person, shopping somewhere, listen, my Walmart, and, and not everybody maybe has the same kind of Walmarts, but my Walmart is very well lit right now. They've got little camera monitors in the middle of the makeup aisles. And guess what? I'm seeing a lot less compromised products, a lot less stuff gooped out and messy, okay? Because you're on camera, you're very clearly on camera. It dings when you enter the aisle, so you know you're being watched. And I mean, I've got Profusion, I've 
got like periphery brands like Hard Candy and NYX is there now. And you're gonna get some of the best prices on your drugstore makeup. Now, higher end makeup, and I'm gonna order it online, let's say, I go Sephora because they ship better. They ship, they protect the products better. I really don't love having to order stuff from Ulta online because you'll get a big old box and stuff will be rattling around in there. And the chance of something breaking, I just feel is so high when you order from Ulta. So it, QVC is nice, but their shipping just seems to take a while. So I would say Walmart in person and Sephora if I got a place in order. I'm gonna do just probably a combo of these blushes. So pretty. Gotta stop and enjoy the blush, huh? Uh, are you planning to have any more kids? No. That's a no. We are at three. Three's where we're gonna be. Three is where uh, Bub medically has to stop. <laughs> when did he get his vasectomy? It was uh, fall of 2021. Or was it before then? It was in the fall. No more babies, only the pet kind. <laughs> <laughs> Typical bedtime routine for the kids. Oh, by the way, I love taking this highlighter and I kind of go into one of these other powders too and it's really soft and pretty. So typical bedtime routine is we try to have kind of, I call it reading quiet time at about 6.30 and I actually have an alarm that goes off on my phone for that. So that's kind of the kid's cue to find a book, get on the couch, just read. I mean, if Belle's not reading already, she loves it. But it just kind of gets the house toning down a little bit. You know how loud things can get when there's three little kids ages eight, five, and three. It can get crazy. So we need that wind down, I think. And you know, I can read to them or they'll read to themselves or Belle read to Biddy or Biddy read to her. You know, just, we have that wind down time. And if it's a bath night, that'll come before that. But reading quiet time rolls right into bedtime for Bubba first. He goes up first a little before seven. That's turned out to be a really good bedtime for him because he'll go about a full 12 hours on that. And then between seven and 7.30, the girls get up to bed. We do something on the stair steps. I don't know how we got into this tradition. Bub takes the girls up. I always take Bubba up at his time, but he takes them up, but we stop at the stair steps and we all say what we're gonna dream about that night. Like we all come up with some silly thing. Or sometimes it's not a silly thing, but um, we do that. They get in bed. I know they do prayers. If I'm putting them to bed, they do prayers. I sing somewhere over the rainbow. <laughs> Everybody gets all tucked in, gets all the stuffed animals in place, and, and that's bedtime. How do you stay consistent on a morning routine? All right, well guys, I gotta tell you, my morning routine has gotten even earlier. You're gonna think I'm absolutely crazy. This is CoverGirl Easy Breezy Brow. Shade I'm wearing is Rich Brown. I tend to wake up at 4.30 to 4.45 to give myself ample time to get up here and do videos in the morning or just get ready. Why did it get earlier? You know how I said Bubba's sleeping so well and doing so good? Well, he wasn't always doing that good. And um, he would wake really early for a while there. And it just caused me to, if I wanted to utilize this quiet time to do videos, I just had to bump it up earlier because he was waking up at like, I mean, it was so unpredictable some mornings. Some days it was six, you know, some days it was 5.30 and I just couldn't deal. And I had Bub to help me, but yet I'd be sitting here shooting a video and he, here he is waking up down the hall, needing someone to get him and um, we're trying to get him to sleep longer. Sometimes just time and a little growing up is all that helps, but we've kind of gotten through that now, but I still get up a little before five, usually about 4.30, 4.45. It gives me ample time to shoot, to do other things. How do you keep it up? You know, I just decide there, there's things that I, I am 100% gonna make time for. And do you always feel like getting out of bed at the time you do? No. No, you don't. There'll be days where like, I'm super excited to shoot the video I'm gonna do or use the makeup I'm gonna use. And you know, that does really pull me out of bed. But then there are days where you're just extra freaking tired. And you know what has to take over when enthusiasm wears down a little bit? Discipline. You have to stay disciplined with it. That's like your backup generator, you know, so to speak. And you just say, you know, this is my time and I think having kids has made me more disciplined because I've been more confined to where my time is to be really productive and to get a lot done. And yeah, I was on the morning show for four years and woke up early, middle of the night early for that, but uh, that changed me somewhat. But if I didn't have kids, I could be a lot more flexible, but it's like, okay, do you want to keep doing your videos? Yes. Do you want to keep using makeup? Yes. 
you will wake up that early. But this isn't all I do. I covered this in a video, a morning routine video sometime last year, and I still do it to this day. I didn't miss a single day of this last year, and I haven't missed a day of it this year. Even if I traveled, went to St. Louis, did something, I still did this stuff. Um, I have my time and I do it over at that other little desk that I have in the corner of this room. The room is very interesting. It's like a big square, but then there's a notch out of it and there's a desk over there. And I used to do it down at the kitchen uh, counter, but I have two different devotionals that I read. I have a prayer journal that I do. And then I just, I simply spend some time in sort of a meditative, prayerful state. Like I, I pray, and I just sit and be still. And I need that time. I mentioned at the start of the video what kind of a year 2021 was for me. I did not miss a day of this in 2021 and have not yet now. By the way, if you don't want to travel with your devotional books, take pictures with your phone of the page that you're going to be on or the, the days you're going to be missing. And then you can be like, oh, there's November 8th. Got my picture with me. I didn't have to take my whole book. But the prayer journal is really nice. I talk about this more in that routine video. I've kept the same pretty much routine. I feel it has been very therapeutic for me. It has been um, good for me to just start my day with the right mindset, the right intent. Attention. Another question I randomly saw there is, do you pray? Yes, I pray. Um, I pray at the start of my day, I pray at the end of my day, and I pray many times in between. When it comes onto my heart to pray for someone, when someone pops into my head, when someone pops into a comment and says they're going through, so I, I mean, I immediately, I will pray about it. I've gotten so much better at lifting things up in prayer as opposed to trying to solve everything myself and find the answer to everything myself. You can do your thing here on earth, but like pray about it and, and ask for guidance and direction. And when you're in a good headspace and you're feeling content and you're feeling grateful, I think that's when God sends his messages that you're capable of receiving. So that's been a real important part of my days and I know I will do it every day. I will get a video done with enough time to have all the time I need to have what I just call my prayer time. And um, then I go downstairs, I'll straighten up the living room a little bit, you know, fold up any blankets or whatever was left out there, make my bed. Uh, Bub's usually out of it by then. Maybe make lunch if the girls are taking lunch on a given day. Waking up early gives me the chance to get out ahead of the day and everything it's gonna throw at me mentally and just you know, in the physical things that I do. And once you start doing it, once you just d decide, I'm gonna keep putting one foot in front of the other, I'm gonna do it this day, just think about it in terms of days. I'm going to do this tomorrow. Don't see it as my whole life, I'm gonna get up early. Just say, I'm gonna do this today and then decide you're gonna do it tomorrow. Keep putting one foot in front of the other and keep doing it, and I promise you it will become more of a habit and more of a must for you to have that time that you give yourself. Is it worth it to carve that time out for you? For me, I say yes, it is worth it. Okay, um, for eyes, I found this hard candy palette at Walmart. Let me open it up. It says no rose without a thorn. I thought it looked kind of pretty. I think I'm gonna go with this today. I probably won't describe every little thing I'm doing with it, but I'll hold it up so you can see what color I'm on, okay? How do you deal with disagreements in marriage? Okay, so I'm married to a lawyer <laughs> and I'm pretty strong-willed myself. So yeah, we sometimes butt heads and you will. But here's one thing to know. It's not the end of the world if you disagree with your spouse on something. If you have an argument, don't blow it up to be like, oh gosh, everybody else is so happy and we, we just had a fight. Let go of that whole idea because everybody else is having arguments too. You don't live with somebody all the time and not have some stuff blow up just either from what's going on in, in the world or your own stress or your own hormones and your own whatever. A tip I will give is try. Even if you're in a disagreement and maybe it's getting starting to get a little heated, try to just listen. This is advice for my own self because I will be, he'll be saying something, I'll be formulating my next big thing to say, you know? Uh, <laughs> and this would be probably his pet peeve about me. He'll say, you're not listening. No, that's because I was coming up with a better comeback. I'm firing up some more material. But things go better if you try to truly hear the person and try to be empathetic and think about where they're coming from. Here's a, for instance, um, there was a day a couple weeks ago, like 
oh, what happened? There, there's a song called You're Gonna Miss This, and there's a line that goes, one kid's crying, one kid's screaming. Well, I had one kid screaming, another kid screaming. Bubba and Biddy, I mean, like, I don't even remember what Bubba was so upset about, but Biddy, I remember she wanted to go play outside, and Bubba was still finishing his meal, and I was gonna go out with him. I was like, just wait, and she just had a real patience issue with this. Then it was starting to get dark, and I'm like, maybe that's not gonna work out tonight. She lost her absolute mind, and then we got out there, and Nookie decides she's gonna, like, read her book outside and isn't gonna play with her, and she's lost her mind on another level outside, screaming, crying. That's it. We're going inside, and I gotta drag Bubba in, and now he's losing his mind because we're inside again. Bub comes in, and the first thing he sees is me, like, sitting, I'm, I'm like, crying, you know, because I'm, I'm so discouraged. I'm so, like, worn down from this evening that I've experienced, and he rolls in, and I was like, don't you care? What? He's like, what about what I just went through? I didn't really stop and think about what kind of a work day he put in or what even he had going on that day. He's also the type of person who won't tell me if he's had a hard day. Like, he just kind of keep that in. He won't complain about things. I'm like, sometimes you need to complain about things so I know what level you're coming from, you know? But anyway, I felt like we were butting heads. I was in a bad frame of mind. I think kind of rightfully so. He wasn't in the best frame of mind either. And sometimes you just need to really try to give the other person some grace if you can, hear them out, and know what escalates things as far as the other person is concerned. What makes things escalate for him from me is, like I said, me maybe not listening fully to what he's saying, um, interrupting, trying to talk over him, and I'm putting this dark shade here, sorry, my, my brain's like, but makeup. And for me, I also like need to be heard because what'll escalate it for me is if I'm talking and he's, let's say we're in the kitchen talking and I'm in the middle of a sentence and he kind of starts to like walk uh, out of the room as I'm talking. I'm like, wait, what? You can't do that. Like, you have to hear me. You have to listen to me. And they'll be like, but something's going on in this room. And something. I'm like, but I'm, I just need to talk. If you can know what gets somebody amped up and try to stay away from those things. I think it makes conflicts stay more focused on what is the issue at hand and less of the periphery emotions that just drive it up. Does anybody know what I'm saying there? I wouldn't say we have a whole lot of times where there's mega conflict, but honestly, like sometimes it'll be that time of the month and I've noticed it affecting me way more since having kids than it did before, but like I'll get so emotional. I'll be able to cry at the drop of a hat about almost nothing. I could see a Hallmark commercial and have some tears. Bub could come home later than he told me or he forgot he had this event to go to and blah 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 and then that'll that could make me cry. <laughs> and it's just silly but it it happens and you're gonna have life like that so it's it just be as empathetic and understanding toward each other as you can and know what things tick people off the most, and just try your best to be mindful. It's not always gonna work out, though. Sometimes you're just gonna have a conflict, and it, it's real, and it's not like you're the only person in the world who's having one, and so stop feeling that way. Nobody's documenting it on Instagram, so just know that. You're not alone. Least favorite chores. Um, let's see. Least favorite chores. Probably the putting away of clothes and the keeping up with the outgrowing of kids' clothes. They outgrow clothes so fast. And like the need to go through drawers and take things out and put them in tubs and get rid of them or pass them off to someone or, you know, whatever. Like, this palette's doing pretty well, by the way. But like, I'll feel like I just did something like that and then in like another month oh, that doesn't fit you anymore. Like, he's got a few onesies that miraculously have been fitting him for like a year because they're so dang stretchy, and I also had him wearing them when they were way too big for him. <laughs> but like, in a lot of cases, there's so much stuff that, he, that like, oh, these pants don't fit, these pants don't fit. And you just feel like you can never stay on top of the clothes. And when you got three of them that are all in this situation, from Belle to Biddy, there's kind of an ease there because I'm be like, oh, okay, these dresses don't fit you. Boop, they're going over to Biddy's drawer. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit of this. But with Bubba, it's just, it's hard to keep up. And uh, I just don't like the chore of putting away clothes and I need to get a new system. I've got all Belle stuff in the room that the girls sleep in, but that room is not really outfitted with all of Biddy's stuff. It's still in the room that Bubba sleeps in. And then his stuff is still down in his little dresser that's in me and Bub's room from when he was a newborn. And that was all outfitted for him down there. So it's like... 
da, 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 da. It needs a full overhaul. And so that makes that chore unpleasant for me because I know a real overhaul on clothes, storage, all that jazz is what's necessary. When you're organized, cleaning is fun because everything has a place, you know where everything goes. It's not a real hassle and a chore, but when you don't have a good system in place, it's as hard as heck. Do you think you'll start vlogging? Yes, I just haven't had time to figure out my vlog camera yet. It's sitting in a box. I'm so sorry. Like, I just have to figure that out. Uh, biggest story you reported on or one that stayed with you? Ooh, um, that's a really good question. I've interviewed some real high profile uh, people, like in government and stuff, and politics. I'm using Lash Paradise again, I'm getting stuck on this. But those aren't really the ones that stuck with me, even though they were kind of big deal types of interviews. Um, I'll tell you one that stuck with me. It was when I was a reporter on the weekends. So this would have been, I, I wore a lot of hats in my early couple of years there. But at one point in time, yes, I was reporting on the weekends and I was also reporting a few weekdays and I think also an associate producer during some of that. And when you're a reporter on the weekends, the station's not working with the full staff. There might be one other person reporting possibly, or maybe just like you and a photog and then an additional photog. That was kind of the balance of things at that time. And sometimes the weekends are kind of slow. You know, sometimes there's not a ton of huge stories coming up. Maybe you're covering a lot of events. You're covering, you know, some planned stuff that you know you're going to be working on. But sometimes you have what's called spot news. You know, you have things come up. You have breaking news. Well, there was a certain town where there was a shooting. And I, yeah, I had a lot of crime stuff that I covered too. And there was a shooting. So a woman died and I was covering that. And it was like, under investigation. And it was a kind of smallish town in our area where it happened. It was big news. And that was on a Saturday, I believe. And then on Sunday, that person's brother died in a car accident. Same town. So same family. Shooting victim's brother dies in a car accident. Part of my job is talking to people in these very delicate situations seeing if I can interview them. And it's not like I feel like, oh, this is the time when a person needs to talk, when they're going through the most tragic moment of their life. But when you're a news reporter, you're trying to get the story, you're trying to share the story. This was the big story. And I was out there covering it and I had to figure out how can I track down any family here? Like this is a horribly devastating thing. And I remember interviewing the mother who lost her daughter to a shooting and her son to a car accident within one weekend. And I will never forget that interview. It was emotional. I probably cried right along with her. I, I mean, that's probably a reporter no-no, but I often did that. I, I, I shed tears on many occasions with people and I just couldn't believe that that was the story I was covering. What an intense time. And especially for kind of a newbie reporter, like it was, it was heavy stuff. But one thing that I felt I had somewhat of a knack with at the station, I could a lot of times get people to talk to me. I felt I could connect with people in interviews. You don't want to be pushy. Like there are so many sensitive situations where I've interviewed people and something tragic has happened and you, you hate being super pushy. Other reporters around you will be pushy. There will be some like that. But being sensitive to people's feelings will take you so much further. I can remember where I was standing. I can remember what it looked like outside. I can remember her face. That was a very heavy weekend. Okay, I'm just gonna pop on a lip color. This is the Soft Spoken stuff from M Cosmetics. This is in the shade Intuition. And it's like a soft matte lip cream that doesn't really set up and become hard and, you know, dry down. I'm gonna pop that on and maybe rapid fire uh, answer a few more. It has still kind of a nice grip to the lips. This kind of rosy shade is so pretty. Ooh, I love that. You know what blush would be really pretty added into this? My um, Fit Me Blush in Wine. Maybe I can pace myself a little better than I did in that last video. Oh my gosh, just a little bit up here. Do you use Botox? And no, I've never had Botox. I've never had anything done on my face or my body for that matter. Not that anyone's asking, but <laughs> I'm not necessarily like super against it. I feel like I'd be a little bit scared to have something injected into me, but then I've had people who say, if you get migraines, it can be a really good idea to get Botox. I don't know. I'm just trying to use really good skincare and hope for the best right now. <laughs> Least favorite color scheme in an eyeshadow palette. 
I really don't like to see a bunch of pastels with nothing, with no contrast to pull it down. So if you're giving me lilac and light pink and light blue and then no darkness to really anchor it, I, I don't love that. Which age has been the most challenging for you with your kids? Um, I love you too. Uh, I would say it's um, the newborn phase for me. Always the toughest, always the most sleep deprived. You're always the most unfamiliar with that child at that time. You know, you have yet to become an expert on that child, not that you ever really do become an expert. It's all new. Nursing is new for that baby. With your first baby, nursing is new for you as well, and that can be a huge challenge, and it's just draining. I love seeing people's announcements with their cute little newborn babies, and I think, oh, how nice to hold that newborn and stuff, um, but I don't, I don't crave to be back at a newborn phase. I really don't with any of my kids. I would say their best times were ahead of them. You know, love when they start getting into that phase where they're starting to talk and they're starting to really connect with you. You know, the newborn phase is so hard. Favorite pencil gel and liquid eyeliner? Pencil, the Persona pencils, they glide on like butter, but they last and they last in the waterline even. Four simple shades, black, brown, plum, and bronze. Um, I would love it if they'd put out like a forest green and a navy as well, but just terrific pencil liners. Favorite liquid, um, when I'm thinking liquid, I really want great staying power, Milani 17 hour wear. It's more like that traditional inkwell design, but it survived childbirth. I mean, it's, need I say more, it's so long wearing, so black, um, definitely one of the best. I've used some good pens too, like the Essence Lash Princess waterproof liner pen. That's good, um, good option, but nothing wears like that Milani. And then gel liner, I really haven't used hardly any gels lately, so I feel like I shouldn't answer that. Several questions. Do you ever feel the pressure of shifting your focus from YouTube to TikTok and just my thoughts on TikTok and stuff like that? This will be where I end on. I really did want to address this. Um, shifting my focus from YouTube to TikTok will never happen. I will not like let go of my YouTube channel in favor of TikTok. This is such a different format. This is the ability to just talk, to G to be more casual, to really just let it go and not be timed. That little circle that goes around as you're filming a TikTok, letting you know you're running out of time, that stresses me out. I don't like that. If I have a few nuggets of info to share, yes, I will, I will do it. I will continue making some TikToks. I will contribute to that platform because I like taking in some info from there as well. And it's kind of the same feeling I had when I started on YouTube, you know, like, oh, I like watching these videos. I want to contribute something too. I still have that feel for TikTok. I want to do some things, but this is my comfort. This is my, um, you know, what I love to do. Gosh, we're even getting a little light out here. Sun's coming up earlier. I greatly enjoy the longer form nature of YouTube videos. Videos. I don't think it's going away. I think as long as people still like watching shows, you know, like watching a half hour, an hour long show on Netflix or on TV or whatever it is, there will still be interest in watching a long YouTube video too. It's just, it's like TV, it's just more niche, you know, more focused on that key topic. But no, I wouldn't give it up in favor of going over to TikTok. I think the charm of TikTok is that people are more raw and real. And whereas YouTube started that way, and then everybody got these very sterile looking like backdrops and, you know, not looking like they're in their home even. It's just like every, and I'm not insulting that. I'm not insulting that. I'm just saying like, it got very pro, okay? I didn't want mine to become so pro. I'm still sitting here in front of three freaking lights pointed at my face, but I'm in my home environment and I like that. And that's part of what I like about TikTok is the casual nature of it. People are just popping on. They got a tip to share and they're sharing it and it feels very organic and real and I love that. I guess what I'm trying to say is that's still on YouTube at some level. You might just have to dig a little bit to find it, but I feel like my channel has stayed very much kind of the way it was when it began and I'm proud of that. Another thing that I think is kind of interesting about my channel, I hit a million subscribers. I went beyond a million subscribers a, a while back. It was not long after my palettes launched actually and I'm now a little bit below it and does that irritate me? Absolutely not. 
I have been on YouTube since 2007. I'm gonna lose people. People are just gonna stop being interested in my content. That's okay. Um, people are inactive accounts are gonna get deleted from YouTube over a span of 15 years. Absolutely, that's gonna happen. Um, even active people who watch my videos every day will comment occasionally and say, I got unsubscribed. So it happens and I'm, it doesn't worry me at all. I mean, it's not like I got a million people logging on to watch everything I do anyway. So it just, it, it doesn't matter really. It's a fluctuation in numbers that don't really come down to affect my actual viewership that much. But what's interesting about my channel is I'm now earning more through my ad revenue than I ever have before. It's only increased since I've done my channel. Now, part of that is I've got a crap ton of videos out there uh, spanning three different channels, the vlog channel, the express channel, and this one that people continue to view. But also, a really neat thing that I have you all to thank for um, is your duration, the amount of time you spend watching, your the viewer retention, I think is how it's called in the stats. My viewer retention is really good. So that means you guys will log on and you'll watch and you'll keep watching. And I think that's so crazy and so cool, but that has only increased as time has gone on. And I think that's amazing. Um, so thank you for not only watching, not just clicking on because some kind of clickbaity title and then popping out, but actually watching what I do. I appreciate that so much. I think a lot of people talk like, well, I have to take sponsorships because what I earn on AdSense isn't enough. And I thank you for watching my videos really watching them. And it's just funny because I feel like I don't maybe have the view count that I might have had in let's say 2012, but yet my channel is much more profitable than it was then. So that's kind of interesting. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. <laughs> I don't think anybody's probably still on this one, but thank you. I'll say thank you anyway. I love you and I will see you again very soon. Bye.